What Juju Smith-Schuster said about Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens is probably going to make some of y'all want to run that Corvette right off the road because... Don't get mad, uh -huh. it's just what it is. What it is. Yeah, we talking sports, shot out in Graven Vance. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Two, team keep it clean what's going on it's Ingraven raven here with another video and in this video we are here to talk about one why juju smith schuster chose the pittsburgh steelers two why he didn't choose the kansas city chiefs but most importantly number three why he did not choose the baltimore ravens and exactly what he had to say about them before we get into this video team keep it clean i love y'all gotta give a shout out to all the team keep it clean patrons appreciate y'all rocking with us and supporting thank you for that and team keep it clean make sure you tell somebody today that you love them that you're thinking about them that you care about them and just tell them whatever they do in your life just let them know that they're doing a great job and that you appreciate them seriously man because it's so many people that are going through so many different things in our lives but we need to let people know like hey thank you for doing what you do we appreciate you we love you and this is me saying that to y'all right now I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Thank you for the positivity. Uh, thank you for just all the, the, the positive, uplifting comments. Not, and I ain't talking about to me. I'm talking about to each other, man. Thank you for the respect that y'all show to each other because that is, again, like I always say, that's what's most important on here, man. We don't have to agree. Me and you don't have to agree. Y'all don't have to agree with each other. But as long as you're showing respect to each other, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. We're not going to have the same viewpoints on everything. But as long as we can uh, respectfully share our viewpoints with each other, that's it. That's all I care about. So I love y'all for that, and I appreciate y'all. But anyway, so team keep it clean. Juju Smith-Schuster. Ooh, Juju. As we know, uh, the Baltimore Ravens offered Juju Smith-Schuster a contract, and he said, mm, no, I am good. I'm good off of that. And then what made it even worse for Ravens fans was that with the contract that they offered Juju Smith-Schuster, it was more than A, he would make with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and more than B, he would have made with the Kansas City Chiefs. So the Ravens, in a situation they never find themselves in, ever, they were the ones that offered the most money. You never hear that when it comes to the Ravens. Well, at least on the offensive side of the ball. Defense is a different story. But offensive side of the ball, you never hear anything like that. So it was strange. It was a very weird place for us Ravens fans to be in when we found that out. We were like, whoa, Ravens offered the most money? And Juju turned it down? But let's go ahead and dive into the why. Juju Smith-Schuster, who chose re-signing with the Steelers instead of joining the Chiefs in free agency, unveiled that Kansas City was going to be his destination if Pittsburgh had not made an offer. So he let it be known from jump, hey, Kansas City Chiefs, I was going to go there if it wasn't for Pittsburgh hitting my line with that hey, big hit. But anyway... Just seeing Kansas City and bro, Andy Reid was just calling me and he was sending me Lombardi trophy pictures like constantly. We had a good talk. So it would have been Kansas City Chiefs after the Steelers. So, and this was on Michael Irvin's podcast, by the way. But Juju Smith-Schuster let it be known. Like, uh, yeah, me and Andy Reid talked and it was looking like I was headed to Kansas City. And with Andy Reid, he could have the best talk game in the world. But none of that even needed, nothing needed to be said. All he needed to do, he ain't even need to have one conversation, not one word with Juju. All he needed to do, get Juju's phone number, say, all right, hold up, one second. Send him a picture of the Lombardi trophy. That's it. That's it. Because those actions, they speak louder than any words would. Any words. You could give him a nice pitch. You could say, we're going to pay you this. This is going to be your teammate. You could possibly get this many yards, this touchdowns. You see what we do. But... All you got to do is show that Lombardi. And this is a team, this Kansas City Chiefs team is a team, whether you like them or not, they are a team that's been in the Super Bowl the past two years. And if we're being honest, it should have been the past three. But they've been in the Super Bowl the past two years. Yes, they lost this past Super Bowl. But guess what? They got there. They still got there after giving Patrick Mahomes that crazy deal, after giving Travis Kelsey a, a, a raise, after they still paid Tyreek like a year ago. They signed Chris Jones to this crazy deal. So they still been giving out money. But guess what? They've been making it to where they need to go. They didn't finish the job now. They did have some injuries with that offensive line, as we know. But they made it to where they needed to go. So obviously they're, they're getting much 
bigger returns on their investments than a lot of teams are. But Juju Smith-Schuster told them no. But anyway, that, that's the sale right there. That's the sale right there. Andy Reid doesn't have to say anything. But Juju, he turned them down. Anyway, uh, being somewhere in an atmosphere and environment, knowing where the team knows you, they know your history, they know how you are, how to use you, and stuff like that. Coming back and knowing that I would have been, Roethlisberger of course, back for one more year and playing my last year, it was just like, yo, I'm going to take my chance. I'm going to play with Ben. So Juju, he chose to go somewhere where he knows they would know how to use him. He knows they would know how to incorporate him into the offense. He knows that he could have a high level of success uh, with the Pittsburgh Steelers because they have been using him for the past, what, four years. They know him. They drafted him. They've developed him. They know what they're getting. He knows what he's getting, too. Now, that doesn't mean that if he would have went over to the Chiefs that they wouldn't know how to use him because you already know they certainly would. And, and think about this. Like, Juju, had he went to the Chiefs, imagine this dude, Juju Smith-Schuster, being somebody's third or fourth option as a pass catcher. That's a beautiful thing. If you can say that Juju Smith-Schuster, and I know some of y'all are like, oh, I don't like Juju Smith-Schuster, and that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. But the fact that a team could say that Juju Smith-Schuster was their third or fourth option, that is a beautiful thing because that means the people in front of him, they're pretty good. So with the Chiefs, their first option, Tyreek Hill, oh, he's pretty good. Their second option, Travis Kelsey, and you can even do one A, one B. So he's pretty good as well. And then you throw McCole Hartman in there too. But then for, for Juju Smith-Schuster to be either before or after McCole Hartman, it, that, that to be your top four uh, options when it comes to pass catchers, that's a beautiful thing. That is a beautiful thing. So he would have done well over there with the Chiefs. But he chose to go back home to Pittsburgh. And you can't blame him for that. Like he said, Pittsburgh Steelers are familiar with him. They know his game. They know his strengths. They know his weaknesses. They know him better than any other team does because they, hey, they, they drafted him and developed him. So anyway, the Chiefs weren't the only offer that Smith-Schuster had. As the wide receiver turned down a contract offer from the Baltimore Ravens, Smith-Schuster just didn't see himself succeeding in Baltimore. But why? Why would he not see himself succeeding with the Baltimore Ravens, who have had so much success over these past couple of years? I'm curious to see how they're going to be this year, having Sammy Watkins, and how they're going to use him and throwing the ball and stuff like that. So that statement right there, that kind of gives you a hint to where it's like Juju was like, uh, yeah, let's see how those guys do. And it lets you know, like Juju was thinking, he probably envisioned himself because he was a choice. He was their first choice before Sammy Watkins, before T.Y. Hilton, is Juju. It was Juju Smith-Schuster. That was the first receiver that they really went after. And it failed. It didn't go through, obviously. He declined them. But Juju's thought process, from what it seems like, from his quotes, was that he was thinking, oh, I, I wonder how it's going to be over there. And with the Ravens, we've said it. We've said it a lot through this offseason. If they really want to be a place that can lure free agent wide receivers, where this, they really want to be a, a free agent wide receiver destination, they, this year they're going to have to prove it. They are going to have to prove it. Lamar Jackson, he's going to need to get his receivers involved a lot more and different receivers involved a lot more. Now, we know Hollywood and Mark Andrews, they definitely get involved all the time, for sure. But he's got to get his other guys involved too. And this is going to take them, the other guys stepping up as well. Lamar Jackson got to step up, but the other guys got to step up too. Whether it's route running, whether it's playing that backyard football and just making plays, coming back to the ball if everything does not go according to plan. This also offensive line. They're going to need to block. They're going to definitely need to improve when it comes to blocking. Coaches, play calling, involvement, playing guys to their strengths. That's going to need to improve by a mile. So everybody has their part in this whole thing. But collectively, these Ravens, they are going to have to step it up uh, in order to not stop getting declined so much. 
Off of Juju Smith Schuster, mm, nah, I'm straight. Off of T.Y. Hill, mm, nah, I'm straight. It's gonna keep happening unless things change. And again, just because you improve on the passing game, it doesn't mean that you just X out the running game. And I mean, we know that's not gonna happen anyway. And we don't expect them to or even want them to do that. We still want them and know that they're gonna run the ball successfully. But as far as a passing offense, the efficiency has to be better. The catching has to be better. The throwing has to be better. The routes, they have to be better. Let's get back to what Juju Smith-Schuster said. He said, Lamar's a really a heavy run offense with the backs that he has. Yes, that's true. We know. I just, just point being facts. His number one target was Andrews, who's a tight end. Mm. And while that is true, that lets, Juju, that lets you know exactly how Juju Smith-Schuster feels about this Baltimore Ravens offense. With Mark Andrews being their number one option, that lets him know, it lets you know, that he sees it like, um, yeah, if their number one option is a tight end, what, what am I going to do over there? How much am I going to eat over there? I may be starving over there, even though I don't think he would. Now, he certainly wouldn't have the catches and targets and yards and all that that he would have with the Steelers or with the Chiefs, with the Ravens. I mean, it, let's be honest, he, he wouldn't. But at the same time, he just feels like it's, it wasn't the place for him. It wasn't the place for him. And like we talked about before, this was broken down perfectly. If Juju Smith-Schuster is thinking long-term, then Ravens would not be the place for him. Because with the Steelers, again, they're familiar with him. They know how to use him. They know how to incorporate him and whatnot. So his numbers, he can get his numbers up there. And then, hey, he's on a one-year deal. Get his numbers up, show like, hey, I still got it. I'm a good receiver. Okay, somebody come pay me. Next season, the cap's going to go way up. Next season, he'll be a free agent again. Boom. Cash in. With the Chiefs. The Chiefs, we know he would have got some good numbers over there too. Juju Smith-Schuster going against, what, third and fourth corners? Oh, yeah. He would have definitely got to get his numbers up there. And I mean, even if he would have went against the first and second corners, too, just being in that offense, oh, they would have found a way how to use Juju. I guarantee that. But he could have got his numbers up with Kansas City. And then the following year, boom, hey, I'm a free agent. I'm good. Y'all saw my numbers. Sign me. I'm cashing out. But with the Baltimore Ravens, since there are a lot of unknowns, there are so many unknowns with the offense, with the passing offense. Like with the rushing offense, hey, we offensive lines dream. Offensive linemen's dream. Hey, oh, Ravens got to open it? Oh, yeah, I'm down. I'll even sign for cheaper. Offensive linemen's dream. But pass catches, it can almost be a nightmare. So, team keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I know a lot of y'all probably don't love Juju right now. But, honestly, you can't be mad at him. Because he made a smart decision for himself Based off of the numbers and projections, too. And he chose to go with something more concrete than something that was sort of abstract and just really unknown. He chose to go with a sure thing rather than a possibility. And for that, you can't be mad at him. We out.